Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to Fit for a Queen. Well, welcome back, Queen. So excited to have fellow awesome dietitian Adrienne Paxosa in the house. She is a registered and licensed dietitian practicing in Austin, Texas, and the surrounding counties. Adrienne is also a certified eating disorder registered dietitian supervisor, so I highly recommend if you're looking for a supervisor, check Adrienne out and we'll have her contact info. Adrienne began her path towards nutrition through her falling down. She had been dancing since age two and in college was a Kilgore College Rangerette. During a practice, she took a fall and broke her foot, and that sparked the ideas of needing a new direction in her life. After graduating in 2003 from the University of Illinois, Chicago, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Human Nutrition, Adrian began at a hospital in downtown Chicago. She was swiftly promoted to the hospital's director of food service, and in 2006, Adrian returned to Texas to be close to family friends in warmer weather. She opened her private practice, I Live Well Nutritional Therapy, in 2007. Today, I Live Well Nutrition has multiple locations and currently employs eight dietitians and continues to hold space for semester interns. Creating better access to dietitians has been one of the driving forces of Adrian's company. In 2016, Adrian began developing an online training academy to coach dietitians to build private practices. She is launching her podcast, Fearless Practitioners, in 2018 to continue to motivate and educate dietitians to start their dream practice. I've listened to several of the episodes, such good content. Over the years, Adrienne has been presenting on topics of mental health and nutrition, eating disorders, addiction, and building private practice. Along with being a sought-after public speaker, she has been working with local and national media channels to promote nutrition and health through her appearances and messaging. Adrian has been active in the local, state, and national dietetic associations, volunteering and holding board positions. She holds positions at Texas Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Media Representatives, Chair of Behavioral Health Nutrition Dietetics Practice Group, and President of Austin Dietetics Association. In between Adrian's time at her office and volunteering, you can find her enjoying all the fun Austin restaurants when we can go out, <laughs> spending time with her family and friends. And I can say one of the reasons why I gravitated towards her is you just have like the most contagious smile and laughter, um, which was why I was like, I'm going to reach out to her and get her on the podcast. So welcome, Adrian. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with y'all. Well, good. <laughs> Got to get that, that text in there, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even notice when it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> So let's start with kind of that, that shift that occurred from dancing that really seemed to shape your background. Um, tell us a little bit about that, how nutrition became part of it and how this shaped your, your career. Yeah. Um, so I thought I was going to be a dancer and danced all my life and absolutely loved it. And I thought I was the bomb.com as a dancer. <laughs> and so I went off to school and was dancing in New York and just loved it. And had this, like, really kind of Jesus moment. Uh, I broke my foot. I did this, like, crazy move and didn't land well. And had this, like, moment of, like, oh, I'm a good dancer, but I'm not a great dancer. And I'm always going to be in the background. And that just does not go well with my personality. (laughs) Um, And so I always grew up around the hospital. My mom's a nurse, and she became a nurse educator and all that. So just... Grew up around the hospital. I was like, oh, this is cool. I want to help people, but I don't want to touch them. And so I was like, well, food is, yeah, so food's amazing, and I love food, so that just makes sense. And that is pretty much as much research as I did in becoming a dietitian. So just luckily enough, it all fell into place and was meant to be. And I started the path working with athletes and just fell into eating disorders, and it is just my jam. 
<laughs> it's funny how that happens, right? We start yeah. working with athletes and, hmm, the intersection that comes with eating disorders and disordered eating, you can't do one with, without the other. So, yep, so true. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, you are like one of the biggest cheerleaders and it's so contagious. And especially right now with this being such a trying um, really the only word to describe is almost like suffocating time, yet you still manage to stay positive. How do you start your morning, start your days with this positive mindset, and what are some strategies that others can use? Oh my gosh, I love that you said mornings because I am the queen of mornings. Oh my gosh, I <laughs> love morning routines, morning rituals, like they make my heart so freaking happy. And <laughs> like, that's kind of why I think I might be obnoxiously like positive is because I wake up early and I've been doing this since, you know, high school, which is like totally just like last year. And so I wake up and just start my day and it's my time and it's nobody else's time. It's just for me. So if that's uh, exercising, but I always kind of end it with sitting down with my coffee and writing out kind of my appreciations and what gifts I received in the previous day. It sounds a little corny of like, oh, I received like a text message from so-and-so or I received whatever, but it's just really taking stock of all the positive things and appreciating them. And then also finding a way to rest. So I love me and Netflix are best <laughs> friends. <laughs> Ooh, what are you watching right now? finished Tiger King and as as everybody has in quarantine and I have a huge addiction to Gilmore Girls like it is my guilty pleasure I will seriously watch that a uh, whole season over and over and over so it's usually on in the background those are my my jams but my other biggest thing to kind of help with attitude is connection I love humans and being isolated right now is killing my soul so finding ways to connect I heard this one quote that behind every strong woman is a group text message <laughs> that is so true I love that <laughs> so really like finding like being more intentional of connecting with all my other like strong awesome women out there has just been filling up my heart with joy so somebody needs to put a meme or a t-shirt on that because I don't know how many times you'll like send, or they know you have a big meeting coming up and they'll they'll like group and check in on you because they don't want to put on social media. Oh, I, I so love that. And, uh, you know, people get kind of caught up in the, the woohoo or they think it's kind of, I don't even know what would be the word the, to describe it in like positive mindset and positive language. But if you think about down to the brain chemistry, how we physically mm -hmm. respond how then we process things. There really is a lot of power to that. And I'm with you. That's probably why I gravitate towards you. My husband will be like, oh my God, let me finish my coffee before you're bouncing off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, but come nine o'clock at night though, I'm done. Like, leave me alone. I'm sitting in my chair with my Netflix. So yeah. <laughs> And I wonder if part of that ties in, I've heard you speak really passionately about goals. And I think you know, we could have goals professionally, as an athlete, even as a spouse, as a, a mother, whatever that is that you're striving to get better in. I know that you really feel that this is important. So can you kind of share with us why and like how can we approach that? How can we continue to build upon those? Yeah, I think that goals really help us to stay in our lane. So if it's an athlete and you're working on a competition versus a business or your overall health, like finding that focus. Um, I know I love to chase after the sparkly, shiny new thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, so kind of checking in with my goals helps that kind of sparkly, shiny to get focused. Um, so personally and professionally, I love setting intentions. And every year about November, I'll sit down and kind of write out what I want the upcoming year to bring. And uh, I'm so fortunate that I've, uh, I'm a part of an accountability group and I've created some great accountability groups for a lot of my clients that every single week we check in maybe 10, 15 minutes of like, how are you doing with your goals and how are you getting there? And it just helps you to stay in your lane no matter what's going on. And that has been so freaking life-changing. 
Well, I love that. So can you give me an example of some of your intentions that maybe you've had, like an example? Sure. So let's see. Oh, this is a good one. So I'll share like a personal one as opposed to like professional. So one of my personal goals for 2020 is to take quarterly vacations. I'm really good at working, like really, really good <laughs> at working way too much. And I was like, oh, I, I should have more fun. And so that's one of my personal goals is to find a way to structure my work life so that every quarter I could take a vacation. It doesn't have to be like traveling to Europe or whatever, since we can't. Um, <laughs> but I, I wanted to have that intention of like, I need to also remember to have fun. So how do you go about then? Okay, you're going to have quarterly vacation. Vacation. I can't even see. I don't even know the word anymore. I said <laughs> vacation and vacation together. Quarterly vacation. Like, how do you put that on paper? How do you kind of set that goal? Let, let, we're going to jump into your mind right now. Yeah. So, okay, that's my big, big 2020 goal this quarter because it's a little bit of a different quarter and it's still something I want to do. It'll probably be more towards the end of the quarter. So I want to slowly move things in my schedule uh, so that I have some space. So that might take a couple of months, though, to move stuff in my calendar and then to save up. So how am I saving every week for that vacation? Am I looking at prices for flights or hotels or mapping out a road trip? So each week I might have an intention to, okay, I need to save X amount of dollars for vacation at this quarter. So finding ways I can continue to like set that intention weekly or monthly, but I don't want it to just be a wish. I want it to actually come true. So I love it. So you've got the long-term goal and then you've broken it down and then you've gotten the necessary steps to stay on target to reach that goal, but not overwhelming yourself all at one time. Totally. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So let's step into like our realm and let's say somebody is coming and they're like, Adrian, I just want to learn how to eat healthier because we'll, we'll get broad statements like that. How would you help that client break that down into more tangible short-term and longer-term goals? I love that because first and foremost, I want somebody to define what healthy means to them because mm-hmm. everybody has like a different definition. What I think is healthy versus what somebody else is, is going to be different. And so that's kind of where I want somebody to start is to find this goal for me. So we get really, really crispy clear. And then from there, like, I want to figure out, well, where are you feeling that you are on this goal today? And what would it look like? And also what would it feel like? Imagine what it would be like when you achieve that. And so kind of get that broad perspective. And so then I like quarters just because that's where my brain works. So like every three months we'll have like a tangible goal. Um, so maybe this first month we're going to work on eating breakfast and work on snacks. So to make sure we're fueling our body and taking care of it, I want to have ways to measure success because if I don't have a way to measure it, I don't know if it's actually coming true. So if it's to eat healthy, whatever we're doing, how can we slowly make some of those changes and measure them? I like that. So even taking it really small. So do you have them kind of reward themselves if they've been able to reach a goal? Like how do they kind of like pat themselves on the back? Yeah, I leave it up to people if they are reward driven. So depending on personality types, I also like to give all my clients uh, personality tests. <laughs> so you can kind of figure out like, Ooh. what kind of person are you? Do you need rewards? Do you need a lot of accountability? Are you a self-starter? So that helps me to understand also how to structure kind of a goal plan. So if they are a reward person, awesome rock star. Let's figure out rewards that are going to be most beneficial to you. And then also, I want to also tie it into their long-term goals of that feeling. So maybe after uh, this first couple of months and we've worked on breakfast and snacks, let's kind of evaluate how's your energy level? How is your sleep? How is your mood? So kind of doing an evaluation that way and then to see if they're on track to that long-term goal. That's a great idea. Do you have a personality test that you give out as a particular one? Oh my gosh, there's, <laughs> there's so many. So um, I think it's 
called the I know Enneagrams are popular right now. Yes, those are so popular. Um, and I ha- honestly, I haven't taken them. I love the 16 personalities. Me that neither. Was- <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of, I don't want to. So 16 personalities, is, it's a free online one. Um, and it's kind of like the INFJ, all of those kind of ones. Then the other one, it's actually a book that's called The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. She kind of goes into, and she has a free online quiz as well, and kind of goes into the four different personality types, which sometimes feels easier for behavior change. Which makes perfect sense. A lot of times, like in our work that we do with within eating disorders, we usually try to look at what trait is driving some of those disordered behaviors. So the same could even be in goal setting and using it a positive spin, like those strong personality traits, how can we shift those to outweigh some of these that may create a disorder? Oh, so true. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a great idea. I've never even thought to do that. I may steal that from you. Thank you. Please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we always love to finish the interview with how do you live out the fit philosophy? So balancing your performance, your health, your intellect, and time for self. And then let's just say that the magic wand is gone and Corona and COVID is no longer. Where is that quarterly vacation going to be next? Oh. <laughs> so I, I love this question because, uh, and the fit philosophy, because it's, I think all of those things are so important. And no, I am not perfect at balancing all of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> and magically, and I'm like, yeah, I'm so great. I totally, like, have it all balanced out. I'm like, uh, yeah, like, it's hard. And I think kind of, like, coming from that, like, authentic place of, like, yeah, I would like to balance it all out, and I'm not perfect at it, and I'm a work in progress. So I feel like I've got, like, the like performance of like work and uh, movement and health and all of that, like check intellect. Like I always have a stack of books that sometimes get read, but I tend to fall asleep when I read. <laughs> um, so I think in like self care, like all of those, so finding what works. And I think also for me is finding that grace in the season. So like see, the season we're in right now with, the pandemic, I'm like, oh, so self-care is going to be my top priority right now and not losing marbles. And so finding kind of that balance. And I think that it's just, for me personally, of building in that mindfulness of what do I need the most during the season, uh, which helps a lot. <laughs> oh, so my next vacation, there are two, one, two that I really, 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 really want to go on. The first one is to Bend, Oregon. I've never been, but I've heard it's like this cute town that has so many fun activities to do everywhere. That's the first one. And then the second one, I want to go to Russia. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for your time today and coming on. We'll be sure to put all your contact information so they can follow you. And hopefully we'll be able to follow your fun adventures from Oregon to Russia when we can get back to travel. Oh, this has been so much fun, y'all. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, my pleasure. All right. Bye, Queen. Today's episode is brought to you by Yours Truly. I'm excited to announce the releasing of my book, Finding Your Sweet Spot in Sport, Avoiding Relative Energy Deficit in Sport, also known as Red S, by optimizing your energy balance. Be sure to follow me on social media or go to my website, www.beccamacomble.com. Bye, queens. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fit for queen and Hashtag fit for a queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, queens.